It was a golden age of piracy, where the high seas were ruled by ruthless men, whose very names were whispered in fear by sailors and merchants. One pirate stands out, Blackbeard. Born Edward Teach, he became the most infamous pirate to ever exist. He terrorized the Caribbean and Atlantic oceans. His fearsome reputation and terrifying looks struck dread into the hearts of those who crossed his path. This is the story of his dramatic end. A tale of cunning, bravery, and the ultimate fall of a pirate legend. Blackbeard's reign of terror began in the early 18th century. His signature look, a wild black beard adorned with lit fuses and a bandolier of pistols across his chest. They became a symbol of fear. He captained a flotilla of vessels, the flagship of which became the Queen Anne's Revenge. A 40 cannon French slave ship he appropriated. Blackbeard's tactics were simple strike terror to avoid any fighting on his part. He realized that his horrifying appearance and reputation usually caused ships to surrender without even an attempt to fight back. He really enjoyed attacking merchant ships filled with wares and wealth. Yet, perhaps his most audacious move was the blockade of Charlestown in 1718 where he forced his demands for medicine on the entire city. Notwithstanding all this, Blackbeard was not one devoid of a code. He shared his spoils with his crew, ensuring their loyalty. But the relentless pursuit of wealth and power would eventually draw the attention of those who sought to end his reign. By the end of 1718, Blackbeard had taken refuge in the inlets and bays of North Carolina, an ideal hideout because of the dangerous waters and remote location. But little did Blackbeard know that he had not covered his trail so well. Alexander Spotswood, the governor of Virginia, was on a war path and had set his sights on bringing Blackbeard's piracy to an end. He dispatched Lieutenant Robert Maynard of the Royal Navy to hunt down the infamous pirate. Since what Blackbeard had in mind could not be achieved using mere force, considering he was a seasoned officer, what was on Maynard's mind was his plan with two sloops, the Ranger and the Jane, to sail towards Ocracoke Island. His intention was merely to trap Blackbeard unaware and make use of the element of surprise. Anchored in a cove near Ocracoke Island on November 22, 1718, Blackbeard and his men were completely unsuspecting of the looming threat. It was dawn as Maynard's ships began to move into sight, pursuing them. Blackbeard, always the cunning tactician, ordered his men to stand by at the cannons. So, as Maynard's ships approached, an intensive cannon battle commenced, its roars echoing through the water. The first round was fierce. Blackbeard's guns tore the ranger asunder, causing it great damage. But Maynard had taken this into account. He ordered his men to lie concealed under the deck, out of the way, so that the Jane would appear unable to fight. Thinking he had the advantage, Blackbeard gave orders to send men on board the supposed crippled ship. The pirates were in the act of swarming the deck, when Maynard sprung his trap and rushed his men from below decks to meet them in a vicious hand-to-hand -hand struggle. The conflict was savage and confused, and there Blackbeard towered, battling like some wild demon of the sea. Maynard, skilled and vigilant, responded in equal form. The decks ran with mingled gore where these two fought, leaders in the fray. The fight seemed to last an eternity. Blackbeard, despite many wounds, fought on, driven by sheer willpower. But Maynard's resolve was unyielding. Finally, in a last-ditch, desperate exchange, Maynard somehow succeeded in giving the fatal cut, lopping off Blackbeard's head from his body. The death of Blackbeard closed an era. His body, 
showing twenty-five wounds, was thrown overboard. His severed head was placed on the tip of the bowsprit on Maynard's ship as a gruesome trophy and a sign for other pirates. The death of Blackbeard became a point of transition in the struggle against piracy. A sign to all people that even the most frightened pirate could be conquered. Lieutenant Robert Maynard had worked hard for this victory and written his name in the annals of history as the man who felled Blackbeard, the fearsome. Truly, after Blackbeard, pirate legend had been marked by a new era. The frightful image and dramatic death now are in stories, books and films, all guaranteeing his immortal legend. Still, he is the symbol of wild and lawless freedom in the pirate's life. The inevitable end that follows that road is inescapable. The narrative about Blackbeard only makes the cruelty of the pirate's existence more vivid. The one given over to adventure and constantly accompanied by a sense of danger, thus blurring the dividing line between history and legend. 